Next, we'll be examining cranial nerve number eight, the vestibular cochlear nerve. And basically what we're looking at is a gross assessment of hearing. So first off, you'd like to, you know, inspect visually the patient's ears, check both sides, see if there's any lesions or something that stands out. And the next part, I'm just gonna stand to one side, Lindsay, and I'm gonna cover one of your ears and I'll be whispering something at two different distances. One a little bit closer, one a little bit further, and then I want you to repeat and tell me what it is that I said, okay? Okay. So I'm just gonna cover this ear here, and I'm just gonna whisper something now. And I'm gonna move a little further. Okay, now what did I say? Five and 22. Perfect, okay. nice. So you'd wanna perform this on both sides, and uh, moving down the line, we'll be checking out uh, the ears in another way. Now we'll be doing a hearing test involving a tuning fork. So this is called RINS test, and what we're trying to assess is whether uh, bony conduction or air conduction has been affected in any way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tap the tuning fork, I'm going to be placing it on the patient's mastoid right behind the ear, and what I want you to tell me, Lindsay, is when you, if you hear, first of all, vibration, and then secondly, when it stops, okay? And then once it stops, I'll be performing something else with the same tuning fork, so. Ready? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna tap this. Can you hear that? Yeah. Okay, tell me when it stops. It stopped. Okay, can you hear this? Yeah. Okay, good. So as you can see, one is bony conduction versus air conduction. And of course, for the purpose of this video, we might be only demonstrating on one side, but all these tests are done on both sides. So we'd, after doing the left side, we would move and do the right side. Now the second test for cranial nerve eight utilizing a tuning fork is called the Weber's test. And this one is a quick screen to differentiate between potentially a conductive versus a sensory neural hearing loss. So what I'm gonna do is tap on the uh, tuning fork again. This time I'm placing it in the middle of your forehead and I want you to tell me if you can hear it, and if so, does it travel or localize to one side or another, or if it's in the middle, okay? Okay. So, I'm gonna tap on this. Okay. Can you hear it? Mm-hmm. And is it more right, left, or in the middle? It feels like the middle. Okay. Good. Okay, perfect. So, one thing I should mention as well is, before you start, you know, doing cranial nerve aid exams, you should also ask the patient a few questions, you know, first off, any changes in your hearing, and secondly, if there's maybe been an increase in intensity of hearing, and that'll help you zero in on potentially what the problem is. Now that we've screened for hearing problems with cranial nerve eight, we're gonna actually look at the vestibular part of the vestibulocochlear nerve. So this one, we're using a turning test. Basically, you're gonna have your patient stand, close their eyes, and what I want you to do is just march in place. And I'm going to observe. Okay, so go ahead, Lindsay. Just keep marching in place for a few seconds. So a normal test would be what we're seeing here. However, if there was a lesion or a problem with the nerve, the patient would start to turn to the side of the lesion. Okay, good.